Hi guys, welcome to another video. The Margot bag from the row. Is it the new Birkin? This is the Birkin. I have also got my hands on the Margot bag. What do I think? Is it the new Birkin? Can anything be another Birkin? Let's discuss. So I went to London recently and I managed to get my hands on the Margot bag from the row. I went to the flagship store, beautiful store, very, very, very nice customer service. The gentleman there was very helpful. I managed to try on a couple of the Margot bags. They didn't have many, but they are available. Now I'm going to try and make this very, very helpful and useful hopefully for you guys so how I'm going to give my opinion on this is I'm going to tell you some pros and cons of each of each bag so I can only tell you the ones I've tried on compared to the, the Birkins that I own because I'm well versed I'm well versed with the Birkin so I have the Birkin 35 I also have the Birkin 30. So we're going to talk about probably mainly the 35 because the Margot bag that I tried on was, I think it was the 15 size, which is 15 inches, which is bigger. It's actually bigger than this one. It's actually a very, very big bag. But anyway, so I'm going to structure this by telling you a few pros and cons of the Birkin, a few pros and cons of the Margot bag, and then we can contrast and compare let's get cracking so let's start with the beloved Birkin so this is the Birkin 35 it is a big bag this is in Togo leather obviously it's in the black with the gold hardware this is the quintessential <laughs> the original size of the Birkin so we're going to use this mainly to compare so let's go through a few pros and cons so the pros of the Birkin well the first one is it's a Birkin, which is, I suppose, the whole point, the whole point of this debate. What makes the Birkin so special and sought after? So let's let's drill down to brass tacks. This is just the look of it. It's a beautiful, beautifully made bag. So definitely the pros for the Birkin are just just the aesthetics, the fact that the quality of it, the craftsmanship, the heritage of the brand it's so sought after it's so exclusive it's deemed to be top of the tree now that might not be in your in your view but in a lot of people's view the birkin is the quintessential top of the tree that you have made it you have made it if you manage to get your hands on the birkin so yeah there's a lot of pros in respect of the status, prestige of owning one of these things, the fact that they are so sought after, the aesthetic. I love the fact, I'm just opening this up, I like it so it has a lot of different looks all in one. You can pull the sides out, I have an organiser in this at the minute, but you can pull the sides out and the wings come out and it just looks a little bit more slouchy. Um, also, let me just take this out. This is an organiser. Can I just mention this? This is an organiser that I bought from 7RP. Back in the day where you thought you had to buy one of these things if you were spending so much money on this. You don't need to. Anyway, handbag angels. They're much nicer, much, much more affordable, much easier to get your hands on, much quicker delivery, all the rest of it. Anyway, so that's it without its liner in. And... I love the fact that you can change the look of it and it looks different again. Or you can pull the flap fully over and fully fasten this up and that makes it completely and utterly secure. It also gives it a completely different look to when it's open. So I love that. I also love the fact that it, this brand has, I suppose it's proved its status over the years. This is not a fly by night, you know, flash in the pan trend. This is a forever piece that will hold its value and more. And it, it sort of proved the point, hasn't it, that it has stood the test of time. It is timeless and classic and still sought after after all these years. So it has a lot going for it. It has a lot going for it. OK, some of the cons of the Birkin. Right, the first one that I can tell you straight away, it's heavy, particularly in the 35 size. 
it is heavy the handles are quite thick and big and although that makes it quite robust it is heavy this has got nothing in it and yeah i feel like i'm weightlifting at the gym so that's something to bear in mind even though it is fully fastened up and makes it secure the con of this is that to get into it is a real faff if it is done up so most people leave it open as you can see i'm fiddling with it now to get this open <laughs> so i can show you again so you have to undo all of this and then you have to undo all of this and there's no way you're going to be doing that when you're in a shop waiting to pay for something so it's fiddly <laughs> it's fiddly or it's open but at least you do have the option so there's a sort of pro and con with it i think the other con of this is it is so expensive these are in the region of ten thousand pounds now it wasn't when i bought mine it wasn't that much direct from store but i think they are getting up towards ten thousand i think the nine thousand something if you to buy this exact one in store they are super expensive on the flip side they hold their value so maybe it's a con but it's also a pro so it's however you look at it if you're happy enough to pay that for this then you do have the knowledge, I suppose, and the comfort that you can sell this for at least what you bought it for. So there's pros and cons with all of it. The other con with it is there are no shoulder straps. It is a handheld bag. So this is not going over your shoulder to give your little hands a rest. Not at all. This is handheld. You can put it on the crook of your arm. The, hand, the strap drop handles here are fabulous for that, but it's heavy so there are some ups and downs to this bag overall i love it everybody knows that i love the birkin i love the birkin more than the kelly i just do even though the kelly has a shoulder strap so anyway we're not talking about the kelly but yeah the birkin is quintessential timeless iconic it's not everybody's cup of tea but if you like it you probably love it the other cons I can think of with this bag is it is impossible to get hold of. And I know that adds then to the pro of it being exclusive if you do get your hands on one. But for the ordinary person in the street who just wants to save up and buy a bag of their choice, it's impossible. You either have to play this silly game. Anyway, I can go on and on about the Hermes, <laughs> the Hermes journey and the game and everything else. But it's impossible to get hold of if you then go on the pre-loved route you are paying a massive premium because the consigners are taking a huge chunk so yeah it's a really 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 difficult to get hold of and also another con when you may or may not agree with this is it could make you a target if you carry this for potential mugging and uh, burglary because everybody knows the Birkin it's recognizable even though it's very understated most people do know it and recognize it and yeah does that make you a target potentially also you could say a con is the fact that it is so recognizable maybe you guys might think I don't want a bag that's recognizable I want a very quiet luxury that nobody knows what it is so there is the Birkin. Okay, so let's talk about the Margot bag. So I tried on two in store and again, spoiler alert, I loved it. I loved it a lot more than I thought I would. I honestly thought that I would have a look at it and think, mm, it's okay. It's a beautifully made leather bag. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing that amazing about it. It's quite unremarkable. But I sort of get it. <laughs> now I've got my hands on it. I tried two. I tried one that was the East West Margot bag, which obviously is slightly wider than the normal one. And it's in the saddle leather, which is a beautiful, beautiful leather, which, yeah, I think it ages. I think it's like the Berenia leather, I think. This was in black. Um, rather than Berenia leather is usually in the the tan color in Hermes but I think it's that type of leather that ages and patinas and it's supposed to show signs of wear and scratches and all the rest of it and it's supposed to just add to the beauty of it so it felt beautiful it was beautiful it was lightweight it was lovely I also 
uh, tried on a suede one now this was in in brown and it was beautiful now brown isn't for me but in the suede there was something about that bag that I didn't want to put it down it was very tactile and very beautiful very light so let's go go through a few pros and cons that I can see for the Margot bag so the first pro is the price it's also a con because it's very very expensive but if you're comparing it to the Birkin 35 and this is smaller than the the ones I was um, trying on they are half the price there are thereabouts half the price so you may think that that's still very very expensive for a brand like the row and it is so for me it's sort of a con but it's sort of a pro if you're comparing it to the Birkin so yeah another pro is just the aesthetic of it it was very comfortable um, it looked cool I really liked the style of it it was understated yet it looked quality another pro therefore is the quality the leather felt amazing it was as I say it was very lightweight a lot a lot lighter than this this is very heavy that the Margot bag for a very very big bag it felt really light so that's a massive pro for me um what else do I love about it just the yeah it had different um compartments inside not many but I quite liked it, it had a zipper it had little slip pockets yeah it was beautiful I think it was more of a fabric interior if I'm correct which some people might say is a con I say is a pro because it makes it light and I think that's where the Birkin becomes very heavy because it's obviously leather lined and it's got lots of leather inside it as well so I think the Margot bag yeah I think I think the interior of it is lovely I just loved it I just loved it Another massive pro of the Margot bag is it is available. <laughs> you can walk in to store and if they have one, you are allowed to buy it, <laughs> which is not the same with Hermes. So, yeah, I don't think there's many around. I think it's sold out most places online. When you, I think it's, you can buy it through Farfetch and maybe maybe Louisa Vieroma and My Teresa, all those type of places, maybe net porter So... I think it's a pro that it's available over multiple sites as well as the row and in store. You can also buy it in Selfridges, you can buy it in Harrods. I know Selfridges didn't have any because I did ask. But as I say, I went into the flagship store and they had a couple. There was also another one in, a, I think it was a croc effect. I don't think it was croc and I didn't even ask to look at that one. But they had, there were some in there, there were some so it is available <laughs> and yeah if it comes back into stock you can buy it you don't have to play a game you don't have to be on a wait list you don't have to prove your worth <laughs> as a worthy client in order to be offered one so um i think that's a massive pro okay so what are the cons well we've talked about the price the price is sort of a pro and a con but it is very very expensive um aesthetically i think it's beautiful so i think that's a pro some of you guys may think it's a little bit not boring but it's just okay it's a beautiful <laughs> beautifully made bag but there's nothing remarkable about it there's nothing iconic about it it's not instantly recognizable unless it's one of those if you know you know things so for some people they like that for some people if they're spending so much on a bag they want to be actually be able to I don't know show it off and have some logo or something about it so um, that could be a con for somebody I don't think these bags are going to hold their value I know they're hard to get hold of at the moment um, but I don't think they're going to be anywhere near the resale value um, in percentage terms if you like compared to the Birkin they just haven't stood the test of time yet and I think that is another con that at the moment we don't know it's a fad right now it's a real trend it's the it bag so yeah in two months time have we all forgotten about the Margot bag and we're on to something else or will it stand the test of time we don't know yet we don't know yet and because of that you can't bank on the fact that it will hold its value and that it will be 
a timeless classic. It may be another trend. <laughs> I think it has a chance of being a more one with more longevity because it is very timeless and classic and it isn't very trend driven in its aesthetic. So it does have the ability, <laughs> potential, but we don't know yet. We just don't know yet. And another con just to mention, it's an open tote. You can't close it up. Now the Birkin, you can close up, but when you've closed it up, it's an absolute faff to get in and out of. But the row bag, the Margot bag, it has a little toggle, I think, to pull it in. But essentially, it's an open tote. So, yeah, you could lose your things. It's not as secure as it could be and all the rest of it. So that could be a con for some people. It also doesn't come with a shoulder strap, but neither does the Birkin. The smaller versions of the Margot bag does i understand so is it like the margo 10 so if it's the smaller size it does have a shoulder strap but the bigger ones don't and i wish all of them did because even you're not going to wear it crossbody it's too big for that but if you're using it as a bit of a travel bag or a bag to i don't know go on the plane with that type of bag which it'd be a fabulous size for that then yeah if you just throw it over your shoulder just to be hands-free for a second or two even though it's a big bag you could wear it like a duffel bag. The straps for some people are big enough. It definitely wouldn't work for me. But for some people, the strap drop here was big enough. You can just about get it. <laughs> it's bigger than these. You can just about get it on your shoulder. I definitely can't. A lot of people carry them like this. And again, it's just a trend, isn't it? It's just a trend to like have this massive clutch bag under your arm and off you go. It looks really cool, but day-to-day -day use when you... Yeah, I always think about getting on a plane or something with these big bags. And I think, no, you just want to be hands-free, don't you, for a minute or two while you're sorting out your passport and everything. So, yeah, it's not as practical as it could be. So what are my overall thoughts? Well, I really loved it. <laughs> I really did. I didn't buy one. Um, why didn't I buy one? Well... I think it's because I am not sure enough to buy one. I really like the suede. I was really surprised at myself. But because it's the first time I've looked at them, I'm very thoughtful when it comes to buying bags. And I sort of gravitate to certain things and certain things I know I'm going to love and I want to buy it immediately. And other things I sort of have to, yeah, keep gravitating back to it and just be sure. And I think for the row bag, I would have to keep thinking about it and being absolutely sure. And also, I'd want to try on the other sizes and just see which is the best one for me. I'd want to have a look at them properly. But if I was to get one, I would definitely go for a black suede or a dark coloured suede. It'd have to be maybe a, a very dark navy or a burgundy <laughs> or, yeah, or a black. I just think they'd be just beautiful. And I'd love how they're aged and everything else. So... Yeah, never say never. But what do I think about whether it is the new Birkin? Well, no, it's not. It's not because it hasn't stood the test of time yet. It doesn't have the resale value. It doesn't have the heritage as yet. It doesn't, yeah, it has all the elements to be iconic, but it hasn't stood the test of time like a Birkin has. So therefore, I don't think you can really compare the two, even though I spent this whole video comparing the two so my view is that i would 100 percent always always love the birkin the birkin is iconic it's never to be repeated they've tried every single brand tries <laughs> but it's never to be repeated i think the kelly was there first i think the birkin has been just an iconic bag since they launched it and yeah i don't think anyone's ever come near it and nor will they I think Hermes know what they're doing with, with the strategy wise. What will happen to the Margot bag? Will we be talking about it in a year's time? I don't know. We will see at the moment. It's all over social media and all of the influencers are wearing it. And that makes it a really sought after bag. But when all that dies down and they've all moved on to something else, we'll see. I think that's my answer. We will see. But I really loved it. So if I could find a pre-loved one, 
that didn't hold its value if I could I don't know if it ever goes in a sale or if there's any discount codes that you can get through Farfetch or something like that maybe maybe I might be investing in one anyway what do you guys think do you have you seen the Margot bag do you love it do you hate it do you not get it thank you so much for watching I'll see you on another one